When you think about corn, you obviously think about food, and it's a food that has been around virtually forever. For instance, here in southern Massachusetts, in the Plymouth area, indigenous peoples have been growing corn for one to 3,000 years. That's a lot of corn. The Plymouth Patuxet Museum, formerly known as Plymouth Plantation, grows corn long prized by the Wampanoag community. This is a northern eight row flint corn. It will become multicolored if we allow it to dry on the stalks. Right now, it's in that sweet stage, which Wampanoag people refer to as green corn. Tim Turner, who's from the Cherokee Nation, is the museum's associate director of indigenous education. Wampanoag people, they didn't have a set meal time. So there was always something over the fire for somebody to eat whenever they got hungry. So that is a stone pestle and you can pound it. Go ahead. Yeah, stir it up a little bit. Let's see. On this day, Turner cooks a traditional porridge called nasamp by grinding corn into cornmeal. As it's boiling, it thickens up very similar to cream of wheat, very similar to grits. Later, Turner adds berries, nuts, and sunflower seeds. He says 70% of the early Wampanoag's diet was vegetarian. Wampanoag people grew corn, beans, and squash. And they would have an acre up to three acres of crops that they moved out along the coast to do their planting because of the, the water in the ground. So the, they didn't have to irrigate their crops. Right. And none of the corn went to waste. We'll dry the, the leaves to make baskets. We'll drive the husks to make dolls. And we used it to wrap our food in. If you took a plant's life or an animal's life, you tried to use everything from that plant or animal out of respect for that animal plant giving up its life to sustain your own. The pilgrims, of course, owed their lives to the Wampanoags and to corn. Many of them wouldn't have survived without having been introduced to that, right? They most certainly may have starved. When they're taught by Squanto, they've really become self-sufficient. They had come intending to plant barley, peas, English grains, and they do plant those, but they don't do as well as the corn. In this recreation of a pilgrim village, a mustard drill is underway while Foodways historian Kathy Rudder preps this colonial kitchen. Did they eat what we would call corn on the cob? Not so often. There's a record of people doing that and they were punished for it. Because, what weren't they punished for? <laughs> well, because <laughs> if you dry that corn out, instead of eating it fresh, you've got yeah. seeds to plant next year, you've got grains to grind into flour. So eating it green right. was actually a punishable offense. Because that was considered wasteful. Yeah. The museum's grist mill makes cornmeal as the pilgrims did. It was a central ingredient in bread, stews, and pancakes. The recipe that I'm using is from a cookbook that was first written in 1615. Ye old pancakes secret sauce? Spices. So not a much of a fragrance to it. I not, mean, if you were going to make it very fragrant, that would be super expensive. That would be your, you know, $7,000 oh. hamburger. And you would be <laughs> so punished for that. <laughs> is that understood, company? Oh, <laughs> I think we're about to be arrested for making pancakes <laughs> on a Thursday. I'm telling you, it was, your, it was your idea, okay? The pancakes were her idea! Here's an interesting kernel of truth, if you will. Corn is never found wild. It's always been cultivated, explains Fred Dunford, the museum's gardener and archaeologist. Corn is a grass, it's teosinte, and it was domesticated first in the Mexican highlands almost 9,000 years ago. And through a long process of domestication, it eventually came into this region about 1,500, 2,000 years ago. So the eight row flint corn was grown by New England farmers into the middle of the 19th century, but then it couldn't compete with the hybrid corns, the sugar corns, so it was abandoned. These rows of flint corn were temporarily flattened by storms, an experience shared by generations of New England farmers. Food becomes a journey, not the destination. When you sit down to food that you've grown, you've had an experience from the time you dug your garden in the spring to the meal you're having in the end. That's a pretty enriching experience. 
The Wampanoags, like many Native American communities, followed the practice of companion planting to regulate shade, control pests, and maximize space. The term three sisters is used to describe corn, beans, and squash, which were often called the three sustainers of life. Food historian Kathy Rutter says that for the pilgrims, one of the biggest changes in their diet was the way they made bread. Here, they used cornmeal to make loaves, which resembled thick, crunchy taco shells that they would use often in stews. Coming up, a local business that struck oil.